Hello and welcome to Paper Play with Julie Kay. Today I will be doing a project share and tutorial on how to make these cute little pockets using book pages, digital images, and leftover paper scrap. The book page pocket idea is an idea that I originally learned from Crafty Irina here on YouTube, so I do want to give her credit for inspiring me to make these. And I will definitely link her channel info in the description box below, as she has a lot of great content on her channel that all of us can be inspired by, and so I do hope you guys go and check out her channel. And so here's the pockets that I made, and I'll be showing you exactly how to make these. There's a few little di different variations. Um, this one is a double pocket right here, and then you can see the little image and the butterfly that I used. I added some words and some eyelash trim. Very similar, I just changed up the place where I put the 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 word and the butterfly in those ones. And let's see, um, this one I added a couple little flat back hearts to the, there to add as a little embellishment. This one, as you can see, I just added some little lace trim. It was a remnant that I had left over. And this one, I just again added a little remnant right here instead of the butterfly, just a little remnant of a lace trim. And then this one is also another variation and this one has three pockets where the other ones that I have been showing you has two pockets. And of course you can add little tags or journaling cards inside of these and use them in your junk journals. You can add them as tuck spots or you can attach them on your pages with paper clips um, or just glue them down and use them as pockets. So there's a lot of different ideas on how to use these. I'll just flip through these real quick and then I'll get going on to the supplies. I will post some pictures at the end of the video, so if you just want to pause and look at just what each of them look like, but they're all very similar. You can, of course, change the images out and make them in your own style. These ones are all kind of a vintage, shabby style that I'll be sharing with you today. As far as supplies goes, you guys will need some book pages. I know a lot of us in our junk journals will use the covers, and then we have all these book pages left over, and so we will be needing some book pages. You will also be needing some sort of digital design or you can also stamp an image, cut an image out from a book or a card, anything like that to use. Today I will be working with Christy Art Design Digitals. Um, she's on Etsy and this sheet that I'm using is called Beautiful Ladies and Flowers. All the ones that I showed you guys are the women images but there are also, like here's one with a vintage lady on there but there are also some flower type images in this set. So um, again, just choose whatever image you wanna work with today. You will also need some sort of sentiment and you can either type up sentiments like I have here and then I just cut out what I wanna use on projects. You can also purchase stickers. Um, I believe these ones are from Tim Holtz where you can use little images. If you have smaller rubber stamps that have sentiments or words on them, you can definitely use those too or if you're just getting going and you don't have a lot of supplies, go through your book pages and see if there are some sort of cool words or little sentiments, um, sentences that you want to use, because you can cut those out and use them on your pages or your little book um, pocket pages also. You will also need some sort of flat back pearls. These is uh, some sticker sheets. You can also purchase like mesh bling like this where you can cut off the, the pearls and use them. You could also use crystals or anything else that you have in your stash that will work. You will also need some sort of scrap paper. And for today's project, I will be using some leftover pink cardstock that I have and also paper scraps. And the paper that I am working with today for my paper scraps is the Prima Love Story paper, if you are curious about that. But again, just use your paper scraps. You don't need to cut out a whole brand new sheet. So just go through your paper scraps. You will need a cutting board or a scissors, whatever you prefer to use. I am going to be using some eyelash trim and I do have some little remnants left over from other packet or projects. So I might be taken from here if they're long enough. Otherwise I'll cut them off on this little ball. And if you don't have eyelash trim, you can use um, some cheesecloth behind your little image instead. So here again is what we're making and I use the eyelash, but if you don't have that, you could layer up the cheesecloth behind there. And this is some tea dyed cheesecloth that I had in my stash that I just pulled out to show you guys. I will be also using punches today. So I have two square punches. This one has the little scalloped edge and this one does not. 
you could also choose to do the same thing, but use circle punches if you prefer and you have cutting dies, those also work great. And if you are just starting out and do not have punches, you can always just cut out squares using your paper cutter or scissors. I will also be using this punch. Um, this one I believe is from Stampin' Up, but there are other brands that have similar ones. And again, it's just this little one right here that I'm adding to our project. I'm also choosing to use a butterfly punch, and this one is a Martha Stewart one. You will also need some sort of ink if you like to ink your edges. And today I am working with um, Aged Mahogany from Tim Holtz. It's Distressed Ink, and then a little sponge um, applicator tool that he has. But again, if you don't have this tool, you can definitely use um, like a makeup sponge like this to, to ink your edges. You will also possibly need um, some sort of adhesive. You can use like tacky glue or a craft stick, whatever you like to do, or in the case for the projects today, um, if you have a sewing machine, I will be sewing mine together, but if you don't, just go ahead and use whatever glue or adhesive that you like to use. So to begin with, you wanna take some book pages, and usually I rip out a few at a time from my book, and I cut a few at a time. Just because I, when I make these, I do like to make a few at a time. And I just rip them out of my book just like that. Now, once you've ripped out your book pages, you can kind of see that there are some rips on the edge edges. And so, or torn edges, I am just going to put them in my paper cutter. And I'm just going to trim those off. This project works with any size page, so it doesn't really matter, it's just a rectangle. If for some reason you don't wanna use book page, just you could also just use some scrapbooking paper or even just tea dyed paper, if you like that. And I'm just gonna cut off just a little bit on this edge too right here. You don't have to do that, but um, I'm just gonna do that. So again, the size really doesn't matter. So after you have cut your book pages, you just need one. Again, I like to mass produce them, so I cut several at a time, but you basically only need one book page. And so what you are going to do is take it and you're gonna fold it this way, the long, so that your fold is on the long side of the paper. And you just fold it in half. So that's the first step, pretty easy. So now the next step is you're gonna open it up and you're gonna just fold this end in. And I'm going to fold it all the right, almost all the way up to the fold line. So there's my fold line and you can see I folded the top almost up to that. So the next step after you folded this one in is we're gonna fold this one the opposite way. So I just turn my page over and you don't wanna fold it to the fold line, you wanna do it at least about halfway, or um, this is maybe a little bit over about half an inch or so. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, I just was measuring it, it is. If you look, it's approximately a half an inch. So I'm just folding it right there. So this is kind of what it looks like when you flip it back over. So then the next step is to kind of fold it back like this. So then here's what your top looks like with your two folds that you've made. And then the next step is to just fold it, fold it up like this. And now you got your little pocket here. You got your two pockets. If you want to add a third pocket, what you do is once you've folded it, you can take this one, this piece right here, and then lift this up, and you can just make another tiny little, little fold right here if you want, like that. So now you actually have three pockets. If you want it a little bit bigger, just make the fold down a little bit more. So, so now here I have three pockets if you like that. So another version, and I think this is how Crafty Irina did hers. Hers actually, her folds she left on 
the outsides of her pocket. So instead of folding this back this way, you could also fold it forward. And that would give you a little bit different look for your pocket. You could also maybe use it as a tuck spot here, depending upon how you sewed everything or glued it down. For mine today, I am having all my folds on the back sides. And again, so choose what you want to do and then continue on with me for the rest of the tutorial if you want two pockets or three pockets. So the next step after you've decided if you wanted two or three pockets is to go ahead and ink your edges if you want to. And so I just take a little ink and go around my edges. And I do like to have ink on my little pocket tops and so I just add some ink there. So here's kind of what it looks like now after I've inked it and I'm going to add a little more color up there. If you guys want more of a vintage look, you could go with like a brown ink. Again, I'm just using the aged mahogany from Tim Holtz just to add a little color to, to my book pages. After you have inked your edges, the next step is to go ahead and glue it or you can also sew around it. If you are going to glue, what you want to do is you do want to put glue inside this flap right here. You want to also put glue, well we can just glue this one together real quick. And then I will also be doing sewing on one, which I already have that one done. But I'll just show you guys for those of you who aren't going to sew yours, where you would put glue. So I go ahead and just add in between these pages back here, I just put a little bit of glue and you guys really don't need a lot of glue. Again, just use whatever you like. So I put glue on that page or on that fold. And then I'll put some glue right here. So I'm just putting glue right behind this little section right here. And then I will also put some glue behind this little section right here. Then I go ahead and add glue down the side right here also. So what you'll end up with, hopefully, is a spot where you can tuck a tag or a journaling card right here and right here. So since mine's still a little wet, I just got to hold it there. Um, or if you like the look, which lately I have been into the look of using my sewing machine and sewing around the edges. So again, this is what you had right here. And so what I did on this one right here after I inked my edges is I just went around the very edges with my sewing machine. So I went down along here, here, up the whole side and across the top, which you can see here. And you just want to make sure when you're sewing up in this corner that you do it as close to the top as you can because you do want to allow yourself enough room to add things into your pocket. So once you've done that, whether you've glued it or you've sewn your sides together, this is what you have. And the next step then is to decorate it. So the next step now is to take some scrap paper and cardstock and go ahead and punch a few things. So to begin with, I am going to take my scallop punch. This one is from Marvy. And um, again, you can also use die, die cuts if you have them. And so I'm just going to punch that out. So I have a square. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a layer of cardstock. And this was a scrap piece. I've already punched out a couple from some of the other card or pocket pa pockets that I showed you guys. This one's a little tougher to use for me, so I have to stand up and do that one. But I punched out a little square. So I did go ahead and cut out all the pieces from that um, Christy Art design that I shared with you guys that I'm using, the Beauty Ladies and Flower. It's a digital claw sheet. And I already went ahead and I just cut them on my paper cutter into the squares. And if you, 
If you don't happen to have those types of images, you can always use a smaller square punch and punch out some sort of image from a book page or from some scrapbooking paper. I'm also going, while I'm punching, I am also going to punch out a butterfly and I will be using this Martha Stewart one. And I'm just going to find a spot on the scrap paper that I like and punch out a little butterfly. And then I'm also going to take this punch and punch that out, punch this piece out. And I keep some of my paper strips that I like just for this punch specifically. I mean, you can see this is a really small paper scrap and this punch works great on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch one of those out and I can use either side on that one. After you have all those pieces punched out, you can pick out a sentiment to use. Again, you can either use something that you took out of a book page, you can type up a sentiment, use a rubber stamp, some sticker, or like I said, I like to just type up a whole bunch of sentiments and then just cut them out as I work on projects. So I think I'm gonna do, I like this one that says do what you love right here. So I'm just gonna cut that out. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If you want it to be perfect, go ahead and use your paper cutter and cut it out. Or if you have a paper punch, you can do that too. So again, this one just says, do what you love. And I'm just gonna trim it down just a little bit more. And so I will be using that one. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and pick what sides I want to be the tops of my paper. Like this one, I don't really want that one to show, so I'm gonna use that side for sure. This one I might use the pink on. The butterfly, I'll use the lighter color. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink all of my edges. So the next step is to start gluing things together. And so I'm just gonna take this tacky glue, gonna add, put my sentiment on the long oval piece that I cut out. If you guys don't happen to have that same punch that I used here, you can always just layer it onto another oval, or not oval, but a little scrap square or rectangle piece, that would work too. And I am gonna layer mine slightly to the right because I will put my butterfly right here on this edge. I'm gonna go ahead and layer these three pieces together, again, just using a little bit of tacky glue. You could also, if you wanted to, sew these together on your sewing machine. And then the next step before I do the butterfly is I'm just gonna go ahead and glue some eyelash trim to the back side of this. And so I do have some little remnants left over from other projects. I'm just gonna see if I have one that's long enough to go all the way around. I think that one's long enough, so I'll go with that one. So what I like to do for my eyelash trim is I just go ahead and add glue wherever I want it sticking out from. And I just go around the whole image. So hopefully you guys can see the glue. And then I just very carefully attach this. And I do my best when I'm holding my eyelash trim to try and have the majority of the little um, hairs coming off of it so that you see that on the outside. So as I'm kind of gluing this down, I'm kind of adjusting that. So hopefully you guys can kind of see that. Um, you don't always get all of them hanging out the outside, but I like to try and do that because I just think it looks nicer when my, with my finished project, just having all those little hairs hanging out of it. And then I'm just gonna cut off the little excess right there. So I'm just gonna let that dry, but that's kind of what it looks like right now. 
These also make fun little embellishments just on junk journal pages just like this. So I'm going to set that aside and well that's drawing just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take that little butterfly that we cut out or punched out and I'm going to go ahead and add some flat back pearls to it. For this I do like to use glossy accents which I don't think I mentioned that in my supplies that I used but these are stickers and they will stick to it but I just like to reinforce them and so I'm just going to put just a little bit of glossy accents just right down the middle of that butterfly and I'm going to go ahead and attach three of these to that and so that's what we have right there then I usually just bend my wings up just a little bit and that will take a little bit to dry so now the final step is to go ahead and attach everything onto our little pocket that we made and so uh, the first piece I usually like to add is my little image and this is still wet with glue so that I don't have to worry about putting glue on my edges but I will go ahead and just add a little bit of glue in the middle and you can decide oops you can decide wherever you want to put it onto your pocket. You don't want to cover up anywhere where your pocket actually is, so it has to be underneath that. You can angle it if you want. I'm just going to put mine right there like that. And I just love that little image. It's a vintage lady and she's actually holding what looks like paint brushes. So I think that's really cool. And I'm going to go ahead then next and glue down this one that says do what you love. And so you can decide if you want to layer it on top or on bottom. Again, I'm just going to layer mine on the bottom. And I just put glue So I just added a little strip of glue to the back side of that. And I'm going to center it kind of off to the side because I do know I want to add that butterfly. So I'm going to center it off to the side and down slightly because I do want most of that image to show once I add the butterfly. So I'm just going to stick that right there. And here's my butterfly. It is, the middle pieces are still drying. So I'm just going to try and be very careful with that. I'm just again just going to be using tacky glue. So I'm very carefully just going to put tacky glue just right in the middle of my butterfly. Not very much. And I'm going to attach that little butterfly right there. And again, I just added the glue just to the middle of the butterfly because I want to be able to pop up the wings on the butterfly when it's thoroughly dry. But that's what it looks like. And that is my finished project or close to it. Some different variations that you guys could do if you wanted to is you could go ahead and if you have any little lace remnants or pieces, you can go ahead and attach them or add them to the bottom if you want some lace sticking out or along the side. I do have some of this flat back pearl trim that I had sitting on my desk and I think I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit up here. So I am going to cut these off and add little five little pieces here I think. So these sometimes have little hairs sticking out of the sides and I just like to cut those off when they're on the, the mesh sheets that you can buy. And I do find that the flat back pearls like this stay better with like Fabri-Tac glue or the glossy accents. Um, the tacky glue does work some of the time but um, I just find that the glossy accents or Fabri-Tac glue works better on attaching little plastic pieces. And so you can either draw a little line. I just like to put a couple little dots of the glue on each of the beads of the flat back pearls like that. And I just very carefully 
set it down where I want it to go. I do have to say I do love picking up these flatback pearls that are in the mesh sheets um, just because they are a lot easier to put down like that versus taking off these tiny little flatback pearl stickers and putting them on individually. This way they're all lined up nice and neat and even in between if you guys um, do need mesh sheets like this um, with the flatback pearls I do know um, Craft Supplies for You does carry them in a couple different sizes just so if you do don't have a source that is a source that I like to use for my flat back mesh um, pearls like this and again they come in like bigger wider sheets this is just a remnant left over that I had so that is our finished project so thank you guys so much for watching I hope you all have a wonderful day and happy crafting